Peterson is arguing that everyone is stuck on the historical level of analysis and the metaphorical level is where we should actually be, be determining truth in the Bible. Then say that. Did Jews actually cross the desert? You don't go, well, what do you mean by actually crossed? What you say is, I don't actually think it matters if they did or didn't. I think that the material fact is irrelevant. I think that what's important is the story that we take from it, relevant. And then you can go from there. Don't endlessly obfuscate. Own your position then. No shot. How? Oh, Nick, cool. I'm literally talking about a bullshit neglect report from a specifically vindictive person that is quite literally the opposite of truth. I'm not talking about anything else at all. I'm not saying anything else in here. Talk to me in DMs. Oh, and no guns were ever discharged in this home. I don't even own a 22. Is Adam something bad? I don't know. I used uh -oh. to be a fan of his videos, and then Russia invaded Ukraine, which I also thought was unjustifiable. No fucking shot in this planet of Earth did he just say- Do you mind if people upload 10 minute plus clips of your stream to YouTube? I mean, generally, if it's over three days old, you're good. But when people do it like immediately, I kind of get fucked, but- Hey, I also thought it was unjustifiable. Bro, he justified it like 10 times. What, what was the quote precisely? What do they call Crimea? Um, what do you call Crimea? I call it a part of Russian territory, bitch. That's what I call Crimea. I call it Crimea River. A Russian river, that is. A Russian river. <laughs> videos. Is Adam something bad? I don't know. I used uh -oh. to be a fan of his videos. And then he gave one opinion that I disagreed with. <laughs> I think Hassan is... I could be wrong. I'm trying to remember. I think Hassan probably hates Adam something because I think Adam something was critical of Hassan's coverage of Russia. And if you say anything critical of Hassan at all, he fucking hates you forever. It's over. Like you can't, you can never, ever, ever be critical of a single thing he says ever or else it's like game over. And now he like doesn't like your content anymore or anything else. And then Russia invaded Ukraine, which I also thought was unjustifiable. No fucking shot in this. Video unavailable. Good one. Hebrew. Remember, vertical. I can help you guys figure out any language, okay? I know them all, okay? Why is this not sticking? Okay. Okay, Hebrew is weird vertical things, okay? Let me help you. Let me help you out here, okay? So, like, this thing here, this is probably Hebrew. You see in this, you're like, the fuck is this? It probably says, like, praise be to God, happy Sunday or something, right? This is Hebrew, okay? Now, Arabic, Arabic is way more horizontal, and they do illegal moves, okay? So they'll go, like, below the line where they're supposed to, okay? So, like, they'll be, like, doing, like, this kind of stuff, okay? And they'll even come up sometimes. This right here. Is, this is Arabic, okay? Boom. That's how you tell the difference, okay? Arabic, horizontal, rule-breaking on some of the curves. Hebrew, vertical, okay? They're more verticality. Think pillars of pulled down by Samson? Who was the guy who, like, the one chick cut his hair and he lost his superpowers? Is that even a real story? Who, who, why do I feel like I remember this? Was this real or was this a fucking meme? Can you tell the difference between Chinese, Japanese, and Korean? Um, well, yeah, that's cheating a little bit since I could read Hangul at one point. But like, um, Korean is going to be, um, fuck, I can't, I can't meme it because I, because I learned it. Um, Korean is going to be like chunked out in ways that make sense. Like, I don't, fuck, I don't remember how to write any of it though. It's been, a, it's been too long. But like, if you see shit like, um, that's not a real character. But if it looks like a language that somebody made so that it's supposed to be understood, that's probably like Korean, okay? If there's a lot of Among Us people, this will be like, oh, this is Korean, okay? Japanese is going to be weird, no real like discernible stuff, but it's like a, it's a, but it's like, oh, it looks like an anime. Uh, Chinese is going to be the most complicated shit you've ever seen in your entire fucking life. So, like, Chinese might be, like, this is supposed to be a swastika. I don't fucking know how to draw it. 
I failed Nazi school. This will be like Chinese, basically. Yeah. Japanese is usually simpler. If I see if I see a word written in weird language, if it's super complicated, it's Chinese. If it looks a little bit more understandable, it's Japanese. Um, but if I recognize it, it's obviously it's Hangul, Korean. Oh, see, look, look. Okay, I think there's also dialects, or there's something in in Japanese that borrows from China, or they share shit. So like this, hold on, so this is not fair, okay? Well, no, actually, no, no, hold on, I would get, I would get, okay, so unfortunately, again, I recognize, so Hangul is always gonna be blocks of one to three characters, right? So this is Hangul, this is Korean, okay? This shit right here is Chinese, look at this. What the fuck is this character? It would take me two days just to learn how to write just this character, that's Chinese. And then this, look, oh, some things that look doable, also some weird Chinese shit, I guess, because they share a lot of stuff. This is probably Japanese over here. This over here, absolutely Chinese. Top 100 billion percent, okay? Why did you think there was nothing valuable in that conversation then? It seems like JP's position is a response to that. <sighs> okay, let me give you an example of valuable inquisitiveness versus valueless or worthless inquisitiveness, okay? Um, so somebody says... Um, I'm trying to do this on the fly and it's going to be horrible. So I don't give a f I should never be opening a notepad. Okay. Um, somebody says, do you think the internet is bringing us together or pushing us apart? Okay. So that worthless inquisitiveness is, um, like, well, when you say is the internet pushing us apart, well, what do we mean by the internet? Do you mean like um, your ability to call for Ubers? Do you mean that your ability to chat with people online? Um, do you mean hospitals coming to each other? What do you mean by the internet? And then when you say like um, bringing us together, pushing us apart, well, that's a really interesting concept, isn't it? Like bringing us together, how? Um, you know, like, like in some ways it, it, it doesn't bring us together and in other ways it brings us together more. Um, and when you say pushing us apart, well, haven't we always been pushing apart? I don't know. There's a, there's a thing where you like, you ask a question and you ask a question and you ask a question. And I, I feel like there's, I feel like in life, all of life has this kind of like tension and release that I think is seen almost everywhere. Like it's in narrative structure for film, tension, 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 and then climax is release. It's in music, obviously. You're building tension and you're resolving it. Um, and I think even conversationally, I think there's a bit of tension and release. I feel like when you're doing this inquisitive thing, I think that it should be a tension and release. So when you're asking questions, the point of asking the question is to resolve it into something meaningful later on, which is going to be you explaining why you asked the question and how you would answer the question. So if somebody would say like, do you think the internet is bringing us together or pushing us apart? You might say something like, well, it's interesting. What do we mean by bringing us together or pushing us apart? In some ways, the internet helps us be brought together more than it ever has before. For instance, I can talk to people on the other side of the planet that I've never been able to speak with before. Um, and in other ways, it's pushing us apart because well, now would I, why would I see a person in real life when that person, um, when that person uh, can just be met with online on, in a digital chat room. Uh, so you, you, you're questioning it, you're giving examples, and then there would be like some kind of like uh, release, some bringing together at the end where it's like, uh, <clears throat> I think in some ways the internet is bringing us together more than it ever has before. And I think that we can see that in society. Uh, for instance, when you see uh, English is like the pervasive language of the planet, when you see people listening to the same music across the planet, and I think this is a wonderful thing. I think it's cool that the internet has brought us together in these ways that have never been brought together before. It used to be that stepping into another country was like stepping into another world. Now, stepping into another country, like the language and the, and the, and the culture and the memes and the YouTube videos and everything can resemble where you're from, even if you're halfway across the world. And in some ways it's pushing us apart more than it ever has before. Um, now people will sit in their home for days or weeks at a time and the only person they ever see is the DoorDash deliverer. Uh, but they talk to friends online, but they don't ever see them in real life. And I think that there's something that's lost there in terms of like genuine human interaction when you're only interacting with people, you know, on, on a Discord chat box, right? So I think like that answer, like the last half of that, it would be like a tension and release kind of thing 
where, okay, well, let's like, let's inquire a little bit. What do we mean when we say bringing us together, pushing us apart, and then let's expand on it a little bit. Uh, there's like a pervert idea of like just, or a perverted idea of inquiry where you just ask, 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 and you don't actually resolve anything. There's no, the point of asking is just to avoid answering a question or to infinitely obfuscate and never commit to a position. And I just think that's not, I think it's boring. Wait, real quick, that was a good question. Ah, I wish I could expand on this more. God, fuck. I hate that I venture into so many areas where if you just listen to like, if you just listen to me talk for 15 minutes, I should throw up so many red flags for bullshit. Um, I don't know how to counter that. So somebody said, when you say logic, capital L, what do you mean by that? I don't personally like the words logic or reason or rational because these words become catch all substitutes for a person who just wants to say common sense. And oftentimes it's anything but common sense for what they're saying. So when I say like logic, capital L, uh, what I'm referring to is like a, is like a strict, um, what would you call like prop, like propositional logic or what would you call like syntactic logic? When I, when I say like logic with a capital L, I mean like formal logic. I mean like, um, like the, like, like a syllogism. Um, uh, all men are mortal. Socrates is a man deductively. Therefore Socrates, uh, is a mortal, right? That's what I mean when I say logic capital, I'm referring to like, oh, like logical, like you, you, you have a set of premises. And then from these premises, a, a conclusion is deductively derived, uh, meaning it has to logically follow. And when I say logic, logically follow logically, as in like assuming both premises are, are true in a syllogism, the conclusion is necessarily true. It must be true. It follows the conditions set forth from the premises. The, the, it's a valuable word, and I don't think there's a replacement for it. I don't want to use more complicated words like syllogistic or syllogism, because obviously most people don't have, it's like inaccessible language. Um, but, but if I just say like, oh, well, like, I think it's important that we follow logic, that doesn't mean anything, because 99% of people that say that are full of shit. When people say, oh, we need to be logical and rational, what they really mean is like, I just need you to agree with me, and I need it to be like self-evident. I need you to just agree because you agree because we agree, and that's it. So it's, it's, it's annoying because, um, yeah. Like, yeah, this is, I don't know why you just linked this or where the fuck this comes from. Is this argument illogical? All Vulcans are rational. Captain Kirk is rational. Therefore, Captain Kirk is a Vulcan, right? I don't know how any prop logic is me. One day we'll take the class. Maybe when I come back from Israel, we'll just do a prop logic course. But it's like, I think it's like if, if um, they usually use P and Q, right? Um, but if A, then B, right? Uh, all, um, it's if A, then B. So if a Vulcan, then you're rational. If A, then B. And then Captain Kirk is B. Therefore, what would Captain Kirk be? C, uh, if C, then B. Oh, wait, so it's if A, then B. And then if C, then B. Does that mean if A, then C? And the answer would be no. That's that's not that doesn't logically follow. Um, because all Vulcans can be rational, Captain Kirk can be rational, but that doesn't mean that Captain Kirk is a Vulcan, right? Sorry. The second sentence is not an if statement. If A then B. Is this not, would this not be translated as an if statement? Maybe it wouldn't be. I haven't taken any prop logic. Um, there is an operator that you can, oh, it is? Oh, okay. There is an operator for this, but I don't remember. Like, if and only if A, then B, and then if C, then B, then I think you can say C is A, C equals A, right? Because if you do, I don't know what the if and only if operator is, if there's like a special bullshit or whatever, but. Oh, the arrow implies and then the double arrow is if and only if or IFF, okay. I think for debates, you need to use the term classical logic and then add something like in mathematics. Yeah, but even classical doesn't really make sense. I just had a discussion last night actually on this, like what, what is classic literature? And I was actually curious. I don't actually know. I think classic literature is just like books that get recommended in school. It's stuff, I, we looked it up eventually and I was like, oh, I guess stuff that is important throughout history. So um, important works of literature that people uh, 
that people still reference that are important beyond the time it was written, essentially, is like classic literature. But, um, yeah. I also don't like saying classic logic, because I'm pretty sure even, even like academically or like very formally, I don't think classic logic means anything. Logic is, I'm pretty sure all logic like transcends time period, like lo like law of identity and non-contradiction and excluded middle and all, like all of these like basic identity things and basic mathematical operations logic. I don't think any of you would call these like classical. It's not like there's quantum math now or something, right? Do you think that the meta truth that he's talking about is true when it comes to religious belief? I don't, I just don't put much stock in anything. If a man needlessly obfuscates every single question that's difficult to him, but can take concrete stances on some of the most complicated scientific questions of our time, I don't consider the person to be operating in good faith. Anyone else find substance in the Peterson and Cosmic Skeptic conversation? I feel like I'm going crazy because I actually thought the conversation was great and got a lot from it. I don't understand the criticisms I've seen other people make of, well, what do you mean by table and what do you mean by mean? Jordan feels that people try to box him into a specific historical definition of truth he doesn't accept. He thinks that abstractions can be defined as true and real and uses numbers as an example, as there's a perfectly valid case to be made that numbers are more real than matter. Uh, okay. The problem, isn't, the problem isn't the conversation. The problem is that Peterson will never concretely come down on anything if it is an uncomfortable position to take. But he so concretely comes down hard on things that he feels like he does have a strong political opinion on. I think the inconsistency demonstrates the bad faith engagement with the topics. That's my feeling. But doesn't he argue that it's perfectly obvious what level of abstraction someone should use in a given situation? Peterson is arguing that everyone is stuck on the historical level of analysis and the metaphorical level is where we should actually be, be determining truth in the Bible. Then say that. Then just say that. Say that. Say I don't, whether or not, here's what you would say. If somebody says, did Jews actually cross the desert? You don't go, well, what do you mean by, well, what do you mean by actually crossed? What you say is, I don't actually think it matters if they did or didn't. I think that the material fact is irrelevant. I think that what's important is the story that we take from it. Whether or not it happened is, is not relevant. And then you can go from there. Don't endlessly obfuscate. Just own it. Own your position then. You can see this perfectly with Alex constantly trying to get a historical answer out of Jordan when he has absolutely nothing to say on the matter. Then say that. Then say, I'm agnostic. I don't care. I don't care about the fact of the matter. I only care about the abstraction of the story. That's it. Just say that. He's not a historian and he's not an archaeologist. That's not what he said, though. He said, well, if you look at it, it's definitely plausible. That's what he said. Jordan answers the question whether Exodus actually happened with probably. That's not an answer, though. You're making that that makes it sound like you have done some level of historical material analysis and you fall on the side of it probably happening. Not that you don't care about the that you don't care about it. That's a perfectly reasonable answer. No, it's not right. This is dumb. I don't care. Okay. Oh. The Jews are the creator of capitalism, according to Mueller. Those who embrace capitalism tended to be sympathetic to the Jews, and those who rejected capitalism tended to be hostile to the Jews. Except the irony, of course, is Karl Marx himself, you know, being a uh, a Jewish person. Because many Jews were employed in occupations that Marx considered non-productive, he singled out Jews for particular criticism and blamed Judaism for the exploitation and alienation of workers. This is why they say Karl Marx is an anti-Semite, despite being of a Jewish background himself. Marx... Why does he say things like that? You can be anti-Semitic and be of a Jew, like there's, you can be racist and, but whatever. Background himself. Marx concluded that Judaism was responsible for the alienation of many Jewish workers. Is it Marx or Engels who made weird anti-Semitic comments? Or there's like, I say comments, I think it was just one in a letter. Am I thinking of the right person? Am I, I don't remember. Both? Oh, I don't, I don't like this that much. I don't give a fuck. Literally, nobody cares about either of these people, but except young college students. <laughs> In his 1844 work on the Jewish question, Marx distinguished between the Sabbath, uh, the Sabbath Jew and the everyday Jew. Marx argued that, particularly speaking, everyday Judaism was a commercial practice, not a theology. According to Perry, Marx believed that Jews are the embodiment of capitalism, money system in action, and the creators of all its evil consequences on humanity, which is the reason why they say he's uh, he is a anti-Semite, which once again is ironic because of this part, which is the most important part of this conversation, Jewish Bolshevism. Do you agree with this? People are arguing about this. To qualify as science, a piece of research must be correct and reproducible. 
Um, uh, I don't. I'm not. I don't know. I don't know if I want to. This feels very wrong to me. To qualify as science, a piece of research must be correct and reproducible. I mean, there's there's value in getting something wrong. I guess it depends on what. To go full Jordan Peterson, it depends on what he means by correct and reproducible. And science. <laughs> well, he, he's giving the definition of science. To be correct and reproducible. To be correct and reproducible, he's going to go and describe it, I guess. To be correct and reproducible, it must be described in sufficient details. Okay, sure. In a publication, maybe. To be published to receive a seal of approval. The publication must be checked for correctness by reviewers. To be reproduced, the publication must be widely available to the community and sufficiently interesting. I feel like uh, I feel like the problem is he's using the term science. Shouldn't he say like peer reviewed science or or citationable, citable science or whatever? Um, if you do research and don't publish, it's not science. Without peer review and reproducibility, chances are your methodology was flawed and you fooled yourself into thinking you did something great. No one will ever hear about your work. No one will pick it up and build on top of it. No one will build new technology and products with it. Your work will have been in vain. You'll die bitter and forgotten. If you never published your research, but somehow developed it into a product, you might die rich, but you'll still be bitter and largely forgotten. So much misunderstanding of this comment. Here's a list of things I'm not saying. You need a PhD to do science. You don't want a PhD teacher to do research, but you can learn that on your own. You need to get papers accepted by a journal or conference to publish. You don't. You can post it on rxiv.org. Many French people went through the form. Engineering is not science. It can be, depending on your methodology. I'm a scientist and an engineer. These activities are complementary and need each other. Science requires formal papers. It doesn't. A clear explanation on a website and a piece of code on a public repo will do. Okay. Like, I'm probably warmer to this. Unironically, um, there was like a little quip that they made um, on a Mythbusters episode, I think. And I think it was kind of, it was a half joke, but it really wasn't. Didn't they say, was did this come from Mythbusters? Am I, making, am I making this up? Where one of them said something like, the only difference between science and messing around is writing it down. Um, I probably would agree with that a little bit where, yeah, you need to have like some kind of formal process. You're taking like good notes and details so that it can be reproducible. Like, I, I think I'd probably agree with this. Yeah. Look at who he's responding to himself. He has a problem with internal experiments conducted within companies, which people like Elon call science without making it public. Well, my guess is this guy is probably, especially if he qualifies himself as a scientist and an engineer, the fact that he specifies both means he sees a great deal of difference between the two. And he's probably thinking that, um, he, like, I don't know if he would consider like research and development science. He'd say R&D is different. He'd probably group this in more with like engineering or something, would be my guess. But... Someone has to say it. Elon Musk has lied for 27 years about his credentials. He does not have a BS in physics or any technical field, did not get into a PhD program, dropped out in 95, and was illegal. Later, investors quietly arranged a diploma, but not in science. <laughs> the University of Pennsylvania considers Musk to be a graduate of both the economics department and the physics department. Elon Musk earned a BA in physics and a BS in economics from the University of Pennsylvania. The degrees were awarded on May 19th, 1997. got fact-checked by Snopes. 
This thread will be long. I do not care that much. I guess he sees science as a cultural practice and R&D is not part of that practice. Yeah, it seems like he sees science as more of like this grander, like capital S science contributing to like human knowledge, basically. Should to be a BA in economics and a BS in physics? Can't you get a BA or a BS in a lot of things? But it's like BA means that you did more dances and interpretive like theater performances and BS means you did more math. I don't, I don't actually know. I've always just heard that like BSs are a little bit harder than BAs. And I, I don't know why. I truly don't. Isn't this a cruel way to hunt? Boars in Florida are considered invasive due to their destructive impact on the environment. These wild boars, also known as feral hogs, cause damage by rooting, crop damage, predation, competing for resources, disease transmission. Tifu shooting wild pigs on stream. Shoot him! Fuck! What is happening? Oh shit! Did he even hit it? Is this a is this like a pistol caliber uh, carbine or whatever? What is he sh what is he even hunting with? Just walk up to it and shoot it. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Good. I feel bad. Do you want to spear him, dude? I don't want to put him. I don't want him to suffer. Then shoot him. You have a gun. What do you think you have a gun for? <laughs> what is this statement? What? You crying? I want to bring him home as a pet, dude. You want to stick him with the spear? Yeah, we can throw the spear out here. Get back, get back. Just That's your first hog, bro. Jesus. There's like so many, there's like so many different things going on here. Uh, I, if you, if you feel at all uh, like ethical relating to hunting, one, well, okay, I'm about to talk some shit. I don't know. Do you, do people typically hunt with nine millimeter? I'm guessing this is a pistol uh, caliber carbine. That's my guess here. That's what it looks like. Are you hunting with nine millimeter? I've never seen that before, but maybe some people do. I don't know. So, um, so one, we're driving around using a probably the, not the best weapon. Two, we're obviously not in the best circumstances to like get a clean shot or kill whatever it is we're shooting at. Um, and then three, I, if I'm pretty sure, like if you've got something down and crying, you just walk up to it and you shoot it a couple times in the head or some bullshit. I don't know why you would just leave it here, like, screeching on the ground. Like, having somebody else go get a spear or something. Like, you literally have bullets here. That's, they're meant for killing. <laughs> Jesus. Helicopter boar hunting, not safe for life. Jesus Christ. Oh, maybe people just don't give a fuck about boars. I don't know what the norms are here. Never mind. <laughs> They're insanely invasive. No shot. How? Is this mounted on the, is this mounted on the helicopter with a scope, maybe? Mounted with a scope? Or... South Texas. Everything either wants to bite you. Tifu was going to use a helicopter, but he needed to kill more boars to unlock the kill streak. We're here to fight back. Why do they always have to look like this? All of them. Why? Helping them with some craziest things. One of the neatest experiences of my life right there. 
driving around shooting boars. There is a new supplemental report for the Nick Ricada case that provides new details. Here is the report in full, though it looks cut off at the end. The following items were located in the master bedroom near the nightstand. Yellow snort tube, positive for cocaine. Black vial with white substance inside. An IK tested positive for cocaine. Contents were removed from the black container and placed in a separate baggie, weighing 2.2 grams within the bag. Two credit cards listed to April. Two 22 caliber spent shell casings on the floor of the nightstand in the master bedroom. Why? Why? What? Did he bring them home? Why would they be on the floor? Floor of the nightstand. What is a floor of the nightstand? Do they mean near the nightstand or? Um, in the bottom, like the bottom drawer, I guess. The following item was located underneath the bed in the master bedroom, a six hour AR with several magazines and loose ammunition. The following item was located in the master bedroom dresser, a glass container with metal filter and grinder and glass container, positive for cocaine. The following items were located in a safe in the master bedroom. How do they open the safe? Are they allowed to blow it open? Can they ask for the combination? Bag with cards and dollar bill, positive for cocaine. Large corner cut baggie with white powder, Tested positive for cocaine, weighing 19 grams with packaging. Three small baggies tested positive for cocaine, weighing 5.49 grams with packaging. Green colored tablets tested positive for ketamine, eight dosage units. Digital scale tested positive for cocaine. Metal pan with white powder on it tested positive for cocaine. Two snort tubes and two metal cutters. Snort tubes tested positive for cocaine. The following items are located in a safe in the master bedroom closet. Another safe, $100 bill with white powder residue, tested positive for cocaine. A bindle white bag with white powder substance, tested positive for cocaine. Cocaine scooper. Two baggies within a baggie with a funnel. Unknown brown substance, negative on all NIK tests. The following items are located in a safe in the garage in a closet. Uh, located in a safe in the garage in a closet. Springfield Armory 45 caliber 1911 Sig Sauer 380 handgun. Wait, wh why does he even have like 22 caliber spent casings? Like what is he, what is, what is even shooting 22 in this house? Do they find the gun that does it? Would it, would this? I don't even know how to spell this shit. Would one of these? Um, Rachel, listen, Rachel makes up so much shit. I don't trust anything he says in chat. <laughs> if you find me corroborating there, I'll link, maybe. Um, from the report, it says there, were a, there was a nine-year-old male found with bullet holes. Shut the fuck up. Test of positive cocaine. Did he shoot indoors or shoot somewhere else and brought back the casing so people didn't find it? I mean, I'd be, that's what I would imagine. He brought back the uh, casings or something um, from a range or something. I don't know if it was like shooting in the house. Brown Brown is a purported form, a purported form of cocaine or amphetamine insuff insufflation mixed with smokeless gunpowder. This powder often contains nitroglycerin, a drug prescribed for heart conditions, which might cause vasodilation. Okay. Rage Pope is referencing the Lord of War movie. Digital evidence, digital photographs, audio recording. Oh no, body cam video. Oh no, no, well the audio recording could be like the cop's body cam or whatever. PowerPoint video, clip from Nicholas Ricada's online podcast which shows white powdery substance on his nose and also screenshot from Nicholas Ricada's podcast which shows the white powdery substance on his nose.
Detective Quinn Pompaloon has been made aware by Sergeant Dave Nestor of a family services report from a mandated reporter regarding Nicholas Robert Riqueda, date of birth, blah, blah, blah. Hi. Come over here. Hang out. It was arranged that on May 23rd, 2024, deputies would meet at a predetermined location and eventually travel to the street in Spicer to execute the search warrant. Um, we wanted, or we traveled to the area, and while almost to the residence, we observed a black-colored Lincoln vehicle with uh, Nick in the driver's seat traveling southbound on 51st Street. Um... On 51st Street, as we were traveling northbound, Sergeant Nestor was advised to stop Nicholas and detain him as he was part of the search warrant, and his person was to be searched, which he did. The rest of the above-mentioned officers then continued traveling to the 51st Street address to execute the search warrant. We arrived at approximately 0913 hours, 9.13 a.m. Chief Deputy Kemp Bauman stayed and went to the traffic stop with Sergeant Nestor. When we arrived on scene, we started knocking on the door on the south side of the residence and were able to gain a response from a young female juvenile from within the residence who advised us that her dad advised her not to open the door for strangers. We knocked for several moments, indicating that we were law enforcement or trying to speak with the juvenile to come open the door for us. We noted that there was a keypad on the door and attempted to make radio contact with either Chief Deputy Bauman or Sergeant Nestor. When I overheard radio communication from Sergeant Nestor advising that Nicholas was not going to give us the door code to open the door, this was after several moments and an appropriate time for an adult to make it to the door, at which time Detective Nick Ardoff, utilizing a ram, opened the door, causing minimal damage to the door. While making entry into the residence, I observed a Sergeant Swanson was standing in the kitchen and was making commands for someone to walk towards him. I was holding on the stairway to the downstairs and I observed two females came from a hallway on the northern part of the residence towards Sergeant Swanson. They were detained and brought outside. There were two children located on the upstairs floor. We were advised that there was one child downstairs by Kayla Christine Riqueda. Um, date of birth... Oh, oh, wait, this isn't the child. This is his wife, I guess. Born in 84. The other female who was detained was April Diane and Mold. Okay, 94. Um, they were moved outside and eventually, while making loud commands into the basement from the top of the stairs, I observed a juvenile, a juvenile male walk out. I advised him to walk up the stairs, which he complied, went out and stayed with his mother. I continued searching the residence. We located an additional juvenile female in a basement bedroom who was apparently sleeping. I advised her to walk out with me to her mom, which she agreed to do so. She held my hand as we walked outside. Four children were placed outside with her mother. The children located in the residence were Cecilia, Audrey, Sylvia Marie and Avery I was advised by Sergeant Nestor and Chief Deputy Bauman that they were going to have Nicholas Riqueda travel back to their residence as we executed the search warrant. So he was selling cocaine, right? Why else have a funnel and wait unless he was bringing smaller amounts around? Uh, I don't know much about doing cocaine. I don't know if it's important or not, but I know that like, if I were to theoretically do drugs, I would want to weigh it precisely so I would know exactly how much I was taking. So I would have, I would theoretically have a small digital scale for stuff like that. Um, Cause you don't want to do too much, but I don't know for cocaine if that's ordinary or not, or if you just like eyeball it, or I, I don't know, I don't do cocaine. We continued clearing the residence and were able to have the residence secured. The residence was extremely cluttered. There were clothes everywhere, dirty dishes, dust, and an overall dirty home. Damn. I overheard Nick Rikita arguing with Chief Deputy Bauman in the front of the house, demanding that he receive a copy of the search warrant, which at that time I handed him a copy of the search warrant. I saw him look at it and eventually throw it on the ground. <laughs> The house is a very large house at almost 5,000 square feet. We started searching in the master bedroom where almost immediately Detective Sergeant Brains located a snort tube and a black vial on top of two credit cards. I've also never heard of a snort tube before, but I guess you'd use it instead of rolling paper or something, I guess. Those items are listed above. The snort tube tested positive for cocaine. It said the black tube is a noticeable amount of white powdery substance, which also field tested positive for cocaine. It can literally just be a straw. Okay. Around that time, I went outside and spoke with Nick Riqueda. I requested him to speak with me. I advised him of his Miranda warning. He agreed to speak with me and waived his right to counsel. He explained to me that he may not answer certain questions. This conversation was recorded on my body cam. During the conversation with Nick, he advised that he sleeps in the master bedroom with his wife, Kayla, and that April was just there visiting on this date. 
This is a general overview of our conversation. See body cam video for full details. Why would he say anything at this point? I feel like at this point, you just, well, I'd say lawyer up, but I guess he doesn't want one. But I don't know why you would say anything or give any information at this point. I don't know what the advantages would be. Like, at the point where you're arrested, they've already got a search warrant. So they've hit, I think for a search warrant, it's probable cause with a judge. Um, what is standard of evidence for a search warrant? Probable cause. The officer should give reasonable information to support the possibility the evidence of illegality will be found. Okay. So they've already got probable cause for a warrant and then they found drugs. At this point, I don't think saying anything is going to help you, right? Like you're going to, um, yeah, like you're always getting arrested at this point, you know? At this time, it was determined that Nick, Kayla, and April would all be placed under arrest and transported to the Candyohi County Jail, blah, blah, blah. I observed several injuries to his arms and photographed them. They appeared to be sores common with controlled substance users. Damn, what is he, what is he shooting up then? Is there anything besides heroin that you're commonly injecting? Do people ever inject meth? Somebody said the meth. Are there, are there like liquid forms or injectable forms? Injectable meth am fetamine. Fetamine. I don't know why I'm. I hate. I hate government websites. Uh, honest to God, I'm so serious. The, um, it, Google should ban all government, all dot .govs, all dot .everything should be banned whenever you're Googling for any drug information whatsoever. It's all trash. It's all garbage. Dot .govs and drugs are combined to make people die from drugs, okay? If you're a person and you ever want information about drugs, you'll never find it just Googling because the front page is always overloaded with these dog shit fucking dot .gov websites where they give you the worst information, the worst facts, the most incorrect fucking shit. God, it's so fucking annoying. Um, I should just be Googling, um, does Arrowhead have information about like how you would, um, how you would do a drug? I don't, I, the only thing I've ever, I don't know. Let's check. I have no idea. I don't use this website very often. Is this just a place where you log like experiences and what pills look like and shit? Or do they ever go over like. Just do Reddit. Injecting meth amphetamine. Can DI be considered drug use? I, I don't know why I like this. Never mind. I don't know. Let's see. During this time, Detective Oakleaf advised me that she spoke with Kayla regarding giving a statement, at which time Kayla advised that she wanted to have an attorney. Destiny, relevant at the moment, you please review GDF's debunking human shields vid at a later date. It's the IDF's AI programs, Lavender and Where's Daddy? GDF, debunking human shields. One month ago. 30 minutes. I don't even know what, what does GDF stand for? We didn't go through the... Oh, if you care about injecting methods. Slamming is dangerous for all kinds of reasons. Some of others. If you haven't started slamming, don't. If you had an artery, the blood will be brighter and will spurt rather than ooze. It'll be harder, more painful to inject your drugs and the plunger will probably be forced back and may contain frothy blood. Jesus Christ. Collapsed veins may never recover. Ugh. Choose a quiet, safe and clean place to inject. At home is best.
Ugh. Okay. Gross. Don't care. <sighs> um. Deputies continue to search the residence and the above listed physical evidence was located, taken into custody. Arrangements were made with the grandparents. We're going to secure the residence. All officers left the scene at approximately 11.05. Damn, all of this done in like two hours or less? I traveled back here, went to there. Requested Nick to speak to me. He indicated he was willing to do so. I brought him to an interview room with law enforcement. He was read again his Miranda warning. He agreed to speak with us and waited his right to counsel during our conversation. He refused to answer any questions regarding any cocaine use or any controlled substance use. He advised me that he resides within the residence and stays in the master bedroom with his wife, Kayla, where he sleeps. He indicated that April was just a friend and was visiting, does not live there. He explained that he is extremely stressed out in regards to his five kids and their extra activities. We see audio recordings for further details. Interestingly, the report identifies the Rakeda's former nanny as Cheney Bitsan slash Cheney Holtberg. Name change could be through marriage or as a stage name. Okay. DMs have leaked where Nick Rakeda is trying to run damage control with another streamer to control the narrative despite the details in a search warrant. Oh, Nick. Cool. I'm literally talking about a bullshit neglect report from a specifically vindictive person that is quite literally the opposite of truth. I'm not talking about anything else at all. I'm not saying anything else in here. Talk to me in DMs. Oh, and no guns were ever discharged in this home. I don't even own a 22. Oh, I was wondering where those casings came from. I haven't fired any of my guns since moving from my other home to here. Been about five years, and all of them were locked. Handguns in a safe. AR had a lock through the receiver. Um, uh, f I don't remember, but I think for I think for criminal stuff, the location of the guns I think is pretty important. Um, like if you get caught with a certain amount of guns, or I'm sorry, if you get caught with a certain amount of drugs and you have a gun on the table, prosecutors can use that gun and charge you with a gr with a crime. Like I don't know if it's like possession of a possession of a firearm in commission of a drug crime or something. There's a there's a way that they can charge you for that. But if the gun is locked up in a safe, I think you might still be able to get in trouble for having a gun with the drugs. But it's a different charge, or it's not a drug at all. Um, or I'm sorry, it's not a it's not a it's not a charge at all. I think. I feel like we watched a video on this before. I think they said it was under the bed, though, no? Yeah, one was under the bed, and I think the rest were in safes. Possession of narcotics with a firearm present. I thought it was more than that. I thought it was worse than that. If you, get a, if you find a gun next to somebody using drugs or something. I was going to tweet these pictures, but I'm trying not to get killed. <laughs> Apparently, Honey is wearing the cafe. -a. It's Lisam Al Gaib. <laughs> I don't know how the fuck to pronounce that name. Use of a firearm in commission of a felony? Maybe. We watched the video on this before. I don't remember what it was. It had to do with some other criminal case, but. So it makes sense that he's trying to say that. These guns were like far and locked away or inaccessible. I don't know how that much of that or how much that actually matters for this, so I'm not sure. My dad was helping with the driving the other day for our kids, education, and extracurricular activities. He tallied it up 80 miles a day on average. Jesus. I don't care what people think about almost anything. The kid shit is bullshit. I'm pretty sure I know who reported that, and they have specific animus towards me. The first activity I missed for my kids was the day I was in jail. Shockingly, not pulled over, no cited for a DUI, ever, never even questioned for a DUI ever. Anyway, whatever issues exist for me, and I'm not admitting to shit during my case, obviously, I figured a friend of mine would maybe realize that my children have never been neglected or in danger, but I guess that small courtesy is too much. DMs have leaked where Nick Creator's trying to run damage control with another streamer to control the narrative, despite detail. It doesn't sound like Nick is... He's not really contesting anything that leaked from the case, I think. He's just, like, contesting that he did crazy shit relating to his kids, I think. Or that's what this reads like. Is that driving blasted out of your mind, like the report says? No, you fucking idiot. No one sees me drive. I know it's hard to see someone when they're driving 88 miles per hour, four hours after a bender. Again, what the fuck are you talking about? Are you referring to a speeding ticket? 
Do you know what track marks are, retard? I've never done an IV drug in my life. You're doing cocaine at 8 a.m. with your kids watching cartoons in the living room. What the fuck are you talking about? 8 a.m., homie, I'm usually driving home at 8 a.m. and about to go to sleep. You think my kids ever went hungry or were neglected? Kill yourself. I don't know what to believe. You become a junkie, and they're not the most honest people out there. I've been on stream with you where you were too intoxicated to read super chats for hours. I never thought your kids went hungry. I stopped that because it was getting bad. You need to admit you have a problem. Become a junkie. Wow. All right, thanks.